Hey guys, what is up? This is Mr. X back again. This is go probably going to be the last episode for quite some time. Episode 8 of Surviving Japan. Because, again, I will have to uh, face new challenges. And for now, like last episode, I had the move thing. And I wanted to talk about one more thing which is kind of connected to moving, in a way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically your last problem, right? So you got, you, you found a good apartment, you paid, you had enough money to pay, luckily, um, you, you sorted out all, all, all the utilities, gas, electricity, water, internet, phone or whatever, if you have it, TV, although I don't watch TV, so I, I don't know, but. Probably you can do that as well at NTD Docomo. Uh, well, and that makes me remember there is one thing when it comes to the apartment that you should check. And this kind of chimes into what I was talking about last episode. Always check what kind of sockets are in the room. And I'm not talking about electricity plugs because it is what it is. You can basically overcome it with extensions and stuff. But Always check. There's usually, well, it's called Hikari Consento, and I think I, I did mention that last episode. It's called a Hikari Consento. Just Google it, see how it looks like. But uh, for me, like now, at my current place, I have, I have like, it's like a, a kind of receptacle socket group, like a socket like a group of sockets in the wall. It's somewhere in the room, of course, inside. And um, for me, the TV is together uh, with a kind of... Um, well, there's a ground thingy, like a, a ground plug. Not sure what it is. I think it's radio, maybe? I don't know. But there are two TV sockets. That's like the the coax cables, right? At least for me and uh, at my new apartment as well. However, in my new apartment, the TV sockets are separated from the actual telephone cable socket. So in this one, in my current place, I have a telephone socket, which is, well, it has a phone icon on it. It's, well, you can barely say it, and it's just a two pin or two prong um, that te telephone. Uh, plug um, and that will do that will do usually what happens is uh, the Koji Hito or uh, the engineer from the provider will come and uh, he will basically connect that phone cable to a modem that he brings with and then obviously the modem needs electricity and then from the modem uh, he didn't... Well, actually, he gave me a UTP cable, but I'm using it for something else. But from the modem, which is basically a, a signal modulator, demodulator, that's why it's called a modem. Because uh, basically, with this phone, even it says Hikari, which is fiber or light, of course. Well, it's light, it means light, but they mean fiber. Hi hikari fiber. Um... Even though the the provider provides you with hickory fiber, you still will be limited to this phone line. Now the phone line is limited to 100 megabits per second, which is technically uh, how much was it? It's like well, it really depends. I think my download speed is like 10 megabits per second. Which means uh, I get like one point. How much is that? One point eight megabytes per second. So it's different. If you're not an IT guy, you won't understand. But you basically you if you if you wanna get uh, your actual download speed, like how much data can you download per second, then just divide uh, your bandwidth by eight because that's how it works. Bits bytes. Uh, now this right here 
I have, so I'm in my old flat still, and this one has a telephone uh, socket, and uh, that does limit down the Hikari. Hikari is one gigabits per second, which is great, but uh, obviously, uh, you can tell the provider to change this. I think there's a fee for changing it, probably. Anyhow, uh, don't 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 worry if you see just like a telephone plug in your flat it's fine it's fine it will limit your internet experience but it's not that much of a problem if you're not streaming or you're not like downloading shitloads of stuff i mean for just watching youtube netflix uh, hd is uh, i think 720 sometimes even 1080 is fine it really depends on what server you con you, what server you're connecting to, but usually you can watch HD with just hundred megabits. It's fine, uh, usually. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, and the Hikari Consento is like there's like this um, kanji for Hikari. So this is actually not a Hikari Consento that I have. This is just a phone line. Uh, I don't know what they call it. This is probably Tsuwa or, or no. Uh, to um, dem demva socket tokana maybe this is fine but obviously if you wanna use your full potential and it also depends if the building has so obviously it's it's all about infrastructure if the building has a fiber line connected to the building but your flat has not been like this this hikari socket to this Hikari Anketo, uh, this Hikari Consento hasn't been um, implemented in in your room, then um, you should probably ask your provider to, well, you know, <laughs> how about doing it? But yeah, this phone line is fine for now. And uh, I just went to my new place. I got the key from the from management company just uh, be sure to bring your um, your income or your your stamp with you but if you don't then just it's fine just sign it i mean your gaijin they're not going to be assholes about it because you like <laughs> i mean as a gaijin you're not supposed to well you're supposed to have a stamp but it's not like they're i mean it's kind of a traditional thing in japan like obviously a stamp is harder to well obviously a sign is not that hard to falsify i mean you can sign for other people i i do that all the time no actually i don't <laughs> well it happened it happened in the past obviously at school i signed I, I just learned how my parents signed my notes and i just you know whatever uh still i think uh these incomes or uh, seals, actually, personal seals can also be falsified, but whatever, it's just a Japanese thing. And I think it's cool, just get an income, why not? It's cheap, it's like maximum, I don't know, 500 yen or something. And then uh, you also can register it at the Kuyak show, as I said in the last episode, I'm not sure what it does. <sighs> But why not? It's uh, it wasn't free. It was I think it was for a hundred yen because yeah, you can register your income for hundred yen and you get a little booklet. <laughs> I didn't really understand why it's needed because they didn't ask me that in Shinjuku. So I think in Shinjuku Kuyak show is like there are so many people going that they just don't care, and that the uh, Maguroku Kuyak show they like. They're a bit nicer, a bit more informative, but Shinjuku is also nice. It's just there's just too many people going there. There by the end, they just given up. Uh, yep, that's it. That's like uh, an annex or an addition to the last episode. And uh, yep. So what is it that that what's the last step of moving? Well, it's basically moving, actually taking all your furniture from the old place to the new one. And uh, there are some, like, there's kind of a mafia here for moving as well. If you have a lot of furniture, it can cost you up to Juman yen. So that's 100,000 yen. That's like one month's rent, right? At least for me, almost. 
So that's a bit of problematic to spend even more money on it. You can get, if you don't have many Kagu like me, which is furniture by the way, you can get it for Ichima, Nimayan, maybe. I mean, I have two, well, normal size tables. I have two chairs. I have a floor sofa, which is 135 centimeters long-ish, and it's not too wide, it's not too big. Still, I have like some stuff that I can shove into a, a, a suitcase. I have two suitcases still. So I'm gonna use them to move. Uh, I have an air bed, which is super battery, but I'm planning to buy a, a real bed at Ikea. More on that later, I'll probably go to Ikea and make another, uh, well, i probably make another episode on where to find good furniture, but I probably can tell you just now, just look for Chuko stores, Chuko, that's the kanji of Naka and the kanji of Ko as in Furui, Chuko, uh, Chuko is the right way to say it, secondhand shops, there are so many secondhand good quality furniture because you're in Japan everything is good quality anyways moving so moving companies do cost a lot um, they do it for you you just have to pack in, and then they come they pick it up and they take it to the new place and yada 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 however I was thinking of well either getting a trolley but the trolley is like almost Ichimayan or Rokumayan so I mean, like, putting it on and just dragging it through half of the city is, like, a no-go. You cannot really bring furniture on Densha. As in, like, you can't... They they, they will usually tell you to, well, uh, sir, I'm sorry, but you can't bring it on <coughs> the train. Although I've seen people, and I did that too with my, with my tables, like, they didn't... Because they are not big tables, they are like, I don't know, 130, kind of 140 um, wide, <laughs> as in, and they're not big, so they didn't really care, but if I would be bringing my, my sofa to the to the train, they would definitely tell me, like, uh, that's ikemasen. So, rent a car. However, in order to to actually drive in Japan, you would have to have a Japanese license or have your 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 driver's license, whichever country that is, and uh, get a driver's permit. Not a driver's license. There is no such thing. Here, okay, let me just clarify something. There is no such thing as international driver's license. If you claim there is, then you're an idiot. Because, <laughs> I'll tell you why, there is a difference between your driver's license that your government issued to you doesn't matter which country you live in and there's a difference between driver's permit right driver's permit you can get at your gov government office or whatever your your local uh government office kind of uh just ask them to give you one and that's good for one year but you can only apply for it at your home country okay I don't know how much it costs. I guess it costs something because <laughs> why not? It's not for free and uh, I don't know how much time it takes. I mean, it's just a booklet. It's just a piece of paper saying that, yeah, you can drive. It Basically, it translates your license in, I don't know, several languages or something or even more. And that's basically just a transcript, kind of like a translation of your driver's license, which is valid only for one year. So if, for example, you come to Japan and you got it, then you can drive here, but you have to have your driver's license with you plus this driving permit. Fine, no worries. If you, yeah, if you, if you did your research or you heard it from someone and you did it, kudos to you, you're amazing. Uh, there is no such thing as international driver's license and if you check, if you Google it, you'll see a lot of sites, those are all scams. Plus, if you see a lot of um, driver's permit sites that they can issue you your driver's permit, that's bullshit as well. There's no such thing. You have to go to your home country's government office, whichever, and then ask for a permit. That's it. 
However, uh, obviously going back is a bit, yeah, pricey for me at least. I live in Europe while well, my permanent, well, I'm a Hungarian resident. So going back to Hungary just for that is like <laughs> kind of wasteful, not tainai, as they say it here. So what can you do? Well, you can't rent a car with your international driver's license and if you jump into a car and you drive it and the policeman catches you and you have your 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 Kaigai license, like your, your overseas license, not Japanese license, they're going to fine you. And <laughs> I think it's like Jumanian or something or even maybe prison and probably they're going to um, invalidate your visa. So what you do, look up... Um, Untenmenkyo, uh, Kirikai, sorry, so sorry, Kirigae. It's a long word and it's hard. It means uh, exchanging your driver's license, your driver's license exchange. Koksai, Untenmenkyo uh, Show. What you do, there are three offices in Tokyo at least. One is Shimezu, one is and one is Koto. So if you look it up, you'll see the the Koto one is good in a way that it's it's far enough so that most people don't go there. Most people go to Shimezu one, which is near Shinagawa. I didn't go there. I went to Koto twice because first time I went there and I didn't have enough documents. And I will tell you why or what the documents you need, but yeah, the Koto one, I do recommend it, it's near Toyo Cho, uh, you take the Tozai Sen, is it to Tozai? Yes, you, you take Tozai Metro and you take it all the way, all the way to the east, and it's Toyo Cho, you get off and it's like a uh, five minute walk from the station, and uh, it opens at 8.30, and I advise you to go there quite early, because well, the earlier you go there, the earlier you will uh, get your stuff, and um, yeah, the things you have to bring, your driver's license, obviously, uh, I'd advise you to bring your passport as well, Zairucado, obviously, and uh, what else did I have to bring, oh yeah, you need the Jumin Hyo, Remember, last episode, Jumin Hyo, 300 yen. Get it at your local Kyok show where you live. Or there are some other, actually, I remember, the, there's, the, there are some smaller governmental office store thingies here and there, where you can also get your Hyo, Hyo Min Show. Uh, uh, what did I say? Jumin Hyo. <laughs> oh my god. Your Jumin Hyo. Uh... Mm, they are usually next to like um, stations, big, bigger, well, kind of bigger stations uh, or medium-sized stations, at least in Tokyo. Uh, I didn't go there. Uh, I just I just went to Kyokusho because I had some other stuff to do as well. But yeah, so you need that, and they they're gonna take that. So yeah, that's something that that, that that's a copy of your record. That cannot be copied. If you copy it, it will just say copied. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's printed on a paper that 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 you cannot really copy without them noticing. So that's gone. Three hundred yen gone. That's already uh, gone the, down the drain. And then it's like bring money around four to five thousand yen, all in all. Bring photographs. They will need one photograph for the application form. One small size one. You can. Uh, there are these uh, photograph machines, usually again at stations and whatnot, or um, near uh, institutions, usually like uh, schools. Schools have it, I think. Uh, I've seen a few near universities and stuff. Um, they cost like 1,000 or 800 yen for kind of a lot of photos. But the prices differ. Um, just go there and do it. It's 800 yen and you get a lot of photos and uh, you'll need a photo that's like six months That's like within six months of your application, which is I mean nobody's gonna check <laughs> Nobody's gonna check but just in case <laughs> uh, 
if they wanna mess you up. Uh, and well, you need to prove. Well, for me, I have I, I'm a Hungarian citizen, but I have a UK license, and I did my license way before Brexit. So back then, I had a Hungarian license. I went to the UK. I exchanged it. And then, like, they actually took my Hungarian license, they sent it back home, and I only have the one UK license, because it's European, it, it was European Union back then. So you could only have one license. Now, thanks to the UK and some other countries who have a better relationship and a better education system when it comes to driver's licenses, Japan has recognized them as in, like, well, you don't really have to do much. I just had to prove somehow that I've spent at least three months after I got my driver's license at said country. So if you're if you did your driver's license originally in the UK because you're a UK citizen, then all you need to do is bring your passport probably and maybe some tax documents proving that you've actually spent three months at least after obtaining your license. For me as well, I went to the UK and got my license in 2011. Exchanged, yeah, I exchanged my driver's license in 2011, but I, they didn't actually have records of me working there, which is kind of strange, but, you know, <laughs> uh, whatever. And then I went back there in 2014, and luckily uh, my employer back then uh, did pay taxes on me so I could I actually called up uh HRMC is, is it HR HMR I didn't live too much in the UK so I HMRC I think HMRC yes it's HM Revenue and Customs gov.uk um there is a number you can call and well basically just try to explain to the guy who picks it up like uh, look I'm 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 looking for something that can prove that I've lived in the UK for at least 3 months after getting my license you tell the guy or the girl who who, who you talk to uh what date was your license issued and um yeah, the guy I talked to was super helpful, and he he said, well, yeah, he's just going to okay. So I need, and uh, he checked my records, and uh, he was like, okay, you worked from this, uh, like I can see income tax from this point to that point, and um, he he actually said that well, he's he's completely okay with mailing it to me to Japan. So that's great. So I received it in like two weeks, and. Uh, yeah, that you need, and still be prepared to give some explanation to the uh, to the officer that uh, you're going to talk to, because they're going to question you. Like, yeah, you submit, like you're presenting them with this document, which obviously proves that you've been working in the UK, obviously, and thus living in the UK as well. Um, and they're going to ask you, like, what is this? What does this mean? What does that mean? Because they don't really speak that well English at all so either bring somebody who speaks Japanese or learn Japanese with you <laughs> um, yeah, bring your Japanese knowledge either yours or somebody else's and uh, they're going to question that document because obviously they want you to take the full exam again uh, regardless uh, if the document is on an, is it, it has to be an original one and it has to come from the UK or some some UK governmental stuff so they, 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 they check if you're telling the truth, as in, like, it comes from the UK. They want to know uh, the interval that you've spent in the UK. So basically, if the income tax says from April, because it's because um, I think the UK tax year is usually from April to next year's April, right? So if it's, for example, from May to I don't know, October, they're going to ask, okay, you started on, on, on like, May. And then you worked until October, right? And then that's obviously that's three months. That's that that's enough to prove three months. And um, yeah, they they're gonna take that document. So say bye bye to that one. Plus, one more uh, important thing. It I think it costs around a thousand yen, probably, maybe a bit more. You have to go to JAF. 
So J A F dot J P is it? Kind of is it? Chaff may no Intel Jido Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, it's basically Jeff. It's Japanese Automobile Foundation. You'll need a transcript well uh, a translation of your current license. So for me, UK license, uh they have uh they have an office near kind of Chuo that I would say Diamond. I think it's near Diamond. Just Google it, JAF, Japanese Automobile Foundation. Uh, you go there, uh, you give them your license, and it takes them for usually one day, so you can pick it up next day from noon. For example, if you submitted it in the afternoon. Um, that's like, I think, 2,000 yen or 1,000 yen. I can't remember how much it was. It wasn't too much. And uh, they basically just translate your license and they they also attach a kind of note to that specific country's license. Like for me, it was uh, kind of like an information for the Japanese authorities, like what that license is good for. Like what are the the country's specific laws? Well, not not that detailed, but yeah, just 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 like a summary of um of your license and it's actually just a translation of your license which is kind of bullshit because uk english you know english here still japan is not that good with english but yeah so you need a translation from jaf you need some way shape or form usually a text document is what they're looking for some do dom some domestic tax payment or uh, income tax or passport or um, maybe even like a, a rental contract yeah just 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 yeah if passport is like the problem with me like passport yeah it didn't get any stamps in my passport when i went to the uk obviously because eu and still well yeah i mean it's not just eu but it's schengen UK is not in Schengen, but still they just don't they just don't stamp in your <laughs> in your passport anymore because pff, and even though Brexit happened, I think there's still no 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 stamp needed. Uh, whatever. So bring a passport, bring your Zyricado, bring a Jiminho, bring your well you seal you don't need your seal, bring yourself. Uh, Bring your comp because they're going to take a photo of you there, regardless. So t uh, yeah, take a photo. Uh, t well, pre uh, get a photo at the photo machine. Bring one small size photo. What? Well, they they actually call it the driver's license size photo. Yeah, your Zyricado passport, uh, your driver's license, obviously, your driver's license translation. Yeah, 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 money. <laughs> and then uh, what happens is if you go there at ta in time, I went there at like 7.45ish, I arrived, and I was first in line. And then uh, people kept coming. And uh, those people might have not finished until like afternoon. I finished at like 10.30ish still so from seven so they, they open their the counter at 8 30 but before that they do come out and uh, they do check if you have most documentation or they ask you like okay uh, do you live in tokyo yes no no then go to your local one uh what's your license country blah 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 so yeah and then um what happens is 8 30 they open up you step in. You say, "Yeah, I would like to change my 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 overseas driver's license to a Japanese one," which is not really exchanged because I got to keep my UK license, but I thought they're going to take it away, but they didn't. So right now I have UK and Japanese, which is amazing. Which which actually makes sense because if I ever go back to Europe uh, again, I would have to uh, apply for. <laughs> Well, yeah, then I would have to get 
a license, a driver's license permit again to actually drive in my in my home country or anywhere in Europe, for example, or anywhere in the world. Because now I have a Japanese one, so now I have to ob- I have to abide to the Japanese driver's license rules in other countries. Because some some because some some other countries might not accept the Japanese license. They might say, well, even if you have a Japanese license, you can't drive here. I'm sorry. You would have to exchange yours or you have like maybe half a year uh, like a period kind of where you can, but once that half a year expires, like in the UK, I went there and with my Hungarian license, it's totally fine. I can drive even if it's on the other side. I'm, I'm fine. But after half a year, I'd have to exchange it for a British one, and that's why I got the UK one. Even though nobody really checks. I mean, obviously, if you meet a police officer almost like every week, and then they'd be like, well, you've been here for half a year. I mean, like, we gotta find you now. <laughs> like, I remember you from half a year back. Like, uh, <laughs> you still don't have your UK license. <laughs> dot, dot. You know, it's uh, that's not... I mean, I've known people who who've driven in the UK without a driver's license for 10 years and they they they, they just got lucky they just got lucky anyhow <clears throat> so yeah you you give the guy your documents they're going to obviously ask you a lot of questions be prepared to answer them in Japanese because they don't really speak English well they are okay with it but mm, if if you have all the documentation and everything is clear as the sky, then it's it's fine, it's fine. Then they tell you to sit down because they've actually taken your documents, so you can't even get out. You should stay where you are, <laughs> near the counter. Sit down and wait. Then about an hour passes, kind of, and then uh, they call you to the counter again, and they're going to ask you to go to. A number of counters. First, pay. Pay the fee. 4,000 yen, around 4,500-ish something yen, which is actually right next to the Gaimen Kirikai, so the counter that you've been to. You go to, I think that's, I think the, the Gaimen Kirikai is counter one in Koto, and then right next to it, to the right is zero, the, the counter zero, which is the payment counter. Like everybody goes there to pay fees. Uh, related to that building or those those procedures. So you go there. Uh, if you're lucky, there's no line. <laughs> if you're unlucky, there's a big line, but usually yeah, they, they do work quite fast, so it's not a problem. So you pay your fees. Then you go to have an eye test because, again, UK and some other countries are the lucky countries which do not have to take any other tests like for example, if uh, if you're from the U.S., you'd have to do a written test and a driver's test as well, which is kind of <sighs> I know. But the U.K., I just had to go for an eye test, which was basically it was under one minute. Seriously, I just stepped in. Hi, look into this. I looked in like a kind of uh, an eye examination, like you you know when you go and. Uh, you go to the eye doctor and then she asks you to tell you which which direction to see. Well, well like what, what you can see on the board, right? In Japan, it's like which way does the sea face? Like, yeah. Like, uh, what's it, what, what is the orientation of the sea kind of um, letter? Because it looks like a C, actually. Um so it's like up, down, left, right, whatever. You just have to tell them. Uh, I think they do understand English as well. I mean, it's, it's not a problem for them to memorize four English words, I guess. Uh, actually, five, because then they're going to tell you, like... So that's like the eyesight test, and then there's a color blindness test at the same time. And it's like they, they just ask you, like... Uh, you, you'll see green light and and red light. At the same time, and they're going to ask you, like, do you see a difference between those lights? And if you say yes, then they're going to ask you, okay, which is which? And then you say, well, the um, the upper one is red and the, the lower one is green or the other way around. And then that's it. You passed. That's it. Then you go and... Oh, there was one more. 
Oh uh, yeah, there was one more step, but it wasn't. Uh, it 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 was kind of vague. Like I just went there and then uh, they just asked me like again. They just it, it it's kind of strange. It was another kind of test, but they just asked me like, okay, are you? I think that was kind of like the written test, or that was kind of like another examination where they ask you some simple driver's questions, like, but. Yeah, they just asked me like, okay, you have a UK driver's license? Yes. So you wanna change it to a Japanese one? Yes. Okay, stamp. That's it. So I guess that that bit was like the kind of driver's test thing, because if you obviously if you said, well, I'm from I don't know America, then they would have okay, then uh, take a seat and do this test, and then they even give you like a. And then you have to do a like a pra practical test as well, and for that you have to uh, get an appointment. Uh, it just meant I mean, I've heard some stories that uh, some guys applied for it, but they just they, they just couldn't find the the time to go, and then obviously they make you fail, or you just you know you're you you're you're not used to it. You're like. Uh, anxious that have somebody who's who's there to watch you drive and he actually watches you drive like how you drive it and what you do and it's all in Japanese and like ah uh, but I heard that you actually get to see it once so you actually when you go to this examination first you sit in the back with another guy who gets examined with a judge like, like an examiner guy and the examinee and you. And uh, you get to see the procedure and then it's your turn and then somebody else sits in the back. The the, the guy af uh, neck like the guy after you in the order sequence. That's the story I heard. I don't know if this is true. But for me, yeah, I just had to like, okay, that was checked. And then I went back to the counter again. Uh, the same counter, counter one. And then, yeah, I'm done, blah, blah, blah. I gave them the documents. Uh, um, you don't have to stand in line again. Just go there and just give them. Just like, ah, uh, over much stuff. And then, again, they tell you, they, 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 yeah, when you get your documents back, actually. So you get your documents back when they call you to the counter the first time. And then, yeah, you get like, uh, Moshikomisho, like an application form, and they give you your documents back. So at that point, you can tell, well, I if because from that point, it takes one more hour to actually issue your card, your driver's license card. So you can say, well, you know what, I have to go to work. So then they kind of, I think, as far as I understood, they cancel it. So you'd have to come back again. But I mean, if you've already committed, why not stay? I've stayed. So then um, you go to do your eye test, do your whatever test, uh, come back uh, and tell them you're done. And then they're going to tell you to, okay, it's time to take a photo and go up to the fourth floor. So they give you all the application form, whatever. And then you go and take, I think it was, the eye test was Madoguchi 7. And then, pff, was it four or ten? I think it was ten for the sh for the, for the sh shashin, for because they have to take a photo of you on the spot. I don't know why. I mean, they could just use the ones that you brought. But you went there, a lady greets you, you, sit down, fix your hair, shashin, boom, gone. And then they tell you to go to the fourth floor and sit down. And then they're just going to call you, uh, issuing that takes about an hour, 45 minutes, 30 minutes. It depends on how busy it is, obviously, but maximum an hour. And then finally, when you get it, they're going to call you, uh, pay attention to the number that you get. There's going to be a number. For me, it started with, with six, six, it was a five digit number, 60001, because that was the first one that day. So they call you, they, they're going to shout, <laughs> so don't worry, uh, you're going to hear it. Uh, there's a TV, you can watch some Japanese television, there's actually a ramen restaurant, or, and some jido hanbaiki, and uh, yeah, once they call your name, you're going to go there, they, 
they they they're gonna ask you to check the details or, or obviously every time you talk to someone they're going to ask you to cock it in in japan so be prepared for checking your name and address like a million times and writing it as well oh by the way there is no application form that you have to fill out during this you just go there and they actually fill it out for you because it's it's kind of complicated so once you get finally you get your card but still you're not finished still still you're not finished there is well, there are oh yeah i forgot a step damn it so before uh, you go and take your your photo they're gonna ask you and i don't know why they do this they're gonna ask you to there's going to be a machine to your left uh and they're gonna have they they they're gonna ask you to input four uh sorry uh four digit numbers twice it can be whatever number it is if you don't have to memorize it at all because you're gonna get a printout it's just a kind of secret code that only you know that's kind of well it's printed on the paper so it's whatever but i didn't understand why you need it it's again i think it's just uh, over complicated japanese bureaucracy don't worry about it step to the machine Twice, okay, four pins, twice, it can be the same number, it can be whatever, they're not going to tell you that it's wrong. Take that slip, go and take your shashin, go up to the fourth floor, wait, they call you, and then you get your driver's license card, cocking in, good, fuck, check, good. And then you go to, again, another machine where you have to place your driver's license card on, like, you, you, you will see there's like a... It's not an indent, it's like a place to, 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 to basically put your card to. It's, it's kind of like in like... Anyways, you'll see it. Just put your card there. <laughs> uh, and then you have to input those codes, those uh, four digit numbers that you uh, like but it's it's basically an, an it's basically an eight digit number but divided by two so it's four four. Input those numbers. Check the details. I don't know why we do this, but again, check your details. I guess that the card is a representation of, of some some database record. So the card, they, they might have made a mistake on the card and that's just for checking if they made a mistake at uh, when, when, when they printed out the card. So you just check it, check your name, check your address, check check whatever you want. But it's it's probably going to be the same data, and then that's it. You just exit out, take your card, and then it's fine. Check it in a way that how long it is valid. For me, it's even though my my UK license is valid until two thousand twenty one. Uh, my Japanese is only valid for three years, right? So, well, to to well, this year. <laughs> it's 2017. I should have four years validity with my UK's license, but with the Japanese one, I only have until 2020. Don't ask me why. You get three years. Plus, for the first year, you're basically a beginner driver. Doesn't matter how many years you've been having your English one, okay? Doesn't matter. You're going to have to, like, if you buy in a car, they, they, they will actually tell you to... Put a sign on your car, which looks like kind of like Shingeki no Kyojin. No, it's like a. It kind of looks like wings, but it's blue and yellow. Uh, so the blue and um, green. <laughs> I'm not colorblind. Uh, that's like just to, to signify that you're a starter. I mean, that's that's basically in every country, but in Japan they do take it seriously. And unluckily, there are some rental car companies where. They actually do uh, bitch about you uh, having a fresh driver's license, even though you have been having a UK license for quite some time. It doesn't matter, okay? You have one year has to pass until you're a fully qualified driver in Japan. Even you did all this. And still, you'd have to wait for one year. Now, I, I yet, I've yet to find a rental, a car rental company that actually gave, wanted to give me a car. 
they the, the Nissan. I went to a Nissan one year in Takonobaba, and they said, "Well, you know, I mean, yeah, we can see that you're you're you you've been driving with your English license quite a lot, because obviously they can see when it was issued." But he still like the the guy was still saying like ah, he doesn't know. I mean, he has to ask, and he's not sure, but which probably means no <laughs> so in japan if they tell you they're not sure that means a no so yeah that's basically it uh and they they also give you like a kind of uh, a short explanation in japanese and english um just read it not nothing special uh they actually give you like you have two months period to renew it so i will have to go in 2019 december to 2020 february or something something like that yeah something like that to renew it uh because after that i don't know what happens if it if it runs out i think you can still renew it but i guess then the issue and i guess it's a different procedure if you if you miss the 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 update period, so to speak. But now, actually, you can drive a car without getting fined if the police catches you, uh, but you have to put this this new driver's sign on your car or on the car that you're driving. I don't know where to get it. I probably think Donkey Chan has it, so just go to Don Quixote and buy it. I'm not sure how much they bitch about if you don't have it. I mean, I guess you can get away with it, but they've been they've been trying to tell it to me like they like they 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 were telling it to me quite strictly when I got my license exchange. So I bet they gonna bitch about it if they ever catch me with it or v- without it. I don't think it's a big problem. Uh, yeah, but I think the best bet, if you don't have many furniture, all in all, in summary, if you don't have many furnitures and you don't mind getting your Japanese license for about 6,000 yen, all in all cost, and if you want to be cool with having two licenses, which is actually quite cool, and finally it's not pink, I, I hate the EU licenses, they're all pink, uh... <laughs> So the Japanese license, so you know you have a driver's license in Japan, you have a driver's license in your home country, and if you don't mind uh, spending another round, well, it depends on the car, but something around 6,000 to 10,000 yen for one day to rent a car. Mm, yeah. If you, yeah, if you don't mind spending that money, if you, if you, if you like... Uh, just want to try and drive a car in Japan, which is actually on the same side as Britain. So it's on the other side. It's on the wrong side. <laughs> Sorry. Then, um, yeah, if you don't mind spending that money, if you would rather spend that money on renting a car, moving on your own, at on your own leisure, um, and probably take the car to Ikea or Disneyland or whatever, go ahead. Just be prepared to pay for some parking fees, obviously. I think it might be easier <laughs> to go with the moving company all in all, but still having a Japanese license is cool. And also, if you don't want to do this, or if you can't do this, consider sending your stuff via Kuroneko, aka Yamato. Uh, if you live in Japan, you've probably seen uh, the black cat-ish figure carrying a small black cat. That's Kuroneko. They are like EMS or um, FedEx or whatever, just delivery company. And uh, they have quite good rates, actually. For And, and, and they do ship, uh, they do deliver your, your, your furniture. So if you're not in a hurry... And if you don't have many f- much furniture and if you have some money, go ahead and do Kuroneko. If you have a lot of money, then don't give a sh- don't give a damn and just uh, contract with a moving company and that's it. Or if you're lucky like me and you got a license, but you're unlucky because uh, most rental companies don't talk to you, then again, use Yamato. But if you're lucky, 
or if you have your driver's permit with you, or if you had your Japanese license for at least one year and you're not considered as a freshman anymore, then do go ahead and rent a car and have fun. But that's it from me for this one. 50 minutes, oh my god. I've been talking a lot. Well, that's it for now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do the next episode. Uh, do let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to talk about something. If you have some specific questions. If I can, I will answer them. But that's going to be it for episode 8 of Surviving Japan. I'm Robert. Or Roberto. Roro. Whatever. And uh, have a good... Japan. <laughs> Peace.